Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Salem Asli. He is the only certified professor of Savat teaching in the United States. He currently teaches Savat at the world famous Dan Incentano Academy in Los Angeles, California. Mr. Asli has just completed a dynamic video series on Savat and is currently giving seminars throughout the world on this exciting French kicking art. Welcome. Thanks. Salem, please tell us about your early beginning. Where were you born and when did you first get into the fighting arts? Well, I am born in north of France in a town called Lille in December 2nd, 1959. And I'm raised in this town and until the age of eight, I didn't really do anything, any kind of sport until my mom found out that I was kind of skinny and she decided to <laughs> put me to this uh, gymnastic school which I'm glad she did because it really helped me a lot in the future. And uh, I was doing pretty good and I was doing competitions and things like that until 1974 when uh, something really uh, changed, if I can say, my life. I saw the Chinese movie Invite the Markets and uh, one day I saw Bruce Lee and I was very impressed and I said, uh, this is definitely something for me. And I switched from gymnastic to to martial arts, but um, we didn't have any school really to learn any these things. We didn't have anything besides maybe a karate school in downtown. Mm -hmm. But um, it didn't tell me anything, and I decided to learn by myself with friends and uh, have with focus glove kicking, punching, you know, like play around. Yeah. And so you were self taught in the beginning? Yes, I was a self taught, and uh, more I get involved into. Uh, into Bruce Lee and his martial arts when I could read information about him and what he did, um, I found out that, uh, of course, he was dead, but his, um, his fellow um, companion was keep teaching his heart in the United States. And uh, after many lectures, I found uh, the address of uh, Daniel Santo in his school, and I wrote to him. And uh, he finally answered to me and yeah. ac accepted me as a student, so I decided that uh, I'm going to see him. And, Train with him. So you left France for the United States to study uh, Ji Kune Do mm -hmm. with uh, Mr. Osano? Yes. And what was that experience like? At the beginning it was difficult for me because uh, I really wanted to stay as long as possible to get certificates and teach in France. That was my first goal. And um, when I came here I didn't really speak English. You know, <laughs> it's not really better. but and. Um, it was um, very uh, like a different world, so I was just spending my, my first year to really train very hard and not doing anything, I was just trained with him. And I really enjoyed it because he's a great instructor and everybody know that. Now, this was before you got into Sifat? Yes, absolutely. And did you get ranking from Sifu and Sotano? Um, f for uh, Junfan Kali, I got my uh, apprentice instructor certificates after two years and a half. And um, I start actually to learn Savat here and also by myself. Oh, tell us about that. Um, when I came here, um, I didn't really know a lot about the art of Savat, of what we call in French uh, box Francaise Savat, of mm -hmm. French kickboxing in, in America. And um, in France, I remember having seen uh, one time during an exposition, martial arts exposition, different style, and I saw the art of Savat. And I have to say that uh, it was a lot of jumping kicks and stuff like that. And also uh, um, a demonstration of cane, which is also the stick fighting uh, heart of, uh, France, from France. And that's all I remember so far. But uh, I was not really impressed. And why? It's simply because uh, I was like a Bruce Lee fanatic. And for me, was Jet Kundo was the best. <laughs> and uh, without really knowing what Jet Kundo mean yet. Anyway, when I moved to to California, um, I remember them telling me, you have good kicks, and uh, how come you, you didn't learn Savat in France? Oh, and this was uh, Dan telling you this? Dan telling me that. And um, I said, well, um, I, w I really wanted to, to, be, uh, to be like a JKD, JKD practitioner and not uh, anything else. That's why I didn't want to have any teachers influence me when I was in France when I had the opportunity to travel in France and have different teachers, I say, I just want to learn under you. And um, 
then told me, well, I think that uh, you should maybe have some interest about the art. You are French and uh, you have the opportunity to go to France and meet people. Why don't you do it? And he said, uh, if you want, you can have s try to find some student and try to tell them the art of, of Savat. I'm sure you, c you can do it. And uh, that's where I start to get involved into, into uh, Box Francis. And uh, then I used to have a book of Savat, and I start to read everything about it. And uh, I start to, to, have to put together some uh, fellow students, and we, I start to teach them what I could learn from the book. And uh, I, tr I trained pretty hard on it because uh, the form of purely the form is difficult at the beginning. Yes. Um, if you really want to be to look the best, you, it's difficult. It's very beautiful. It's very graceful. So I keep um, training. I keep looking every day. I was practicing, practicing, practicing. And more I teach, more I learn. And uh, after um, after two years. Um, I went to France after having a right to the French Federation, telling them that I was teaching the art here without certificates. Um, they said, well, if you want to be an instructor, you have to come to France, and we see how good you are, and we see what we can do. So I went back to France, and at the same time, I, uh, I did my immigrant paper at the same time. And uh, I passed the exam. And I did, I think, pretty well because on the, my silver glove degree, I finished. I was the first. I wow. finished first with the, according to what they said, the highest score, <laughs> the highest score they ever seen. And uh, for my uh, teacher certificates, I finished uh, second. That's fantastic. So that took a lot of discipline to actually. Here you are, a Frenchman, and you ended up studying it here from French books and whatever information, and then you go back to France. Get certified. Yeah, they thought that w I was a case. They say we never see that before. We never see anyone learning the art from a book and have a result like that. Yeah. I figure that if I learn as pretty quick, I think maybe because of my background in gymnastic, mm -hmm. and also because um, the way Dan teach the art greatly influenced me to learn also the savat. Mm -hmm. You see. Well, uh, Bruce Lee, he talked highly of savat, didn't he? Uh, according to what Dan told me, Bruce learned Savat by watching videotapes. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, no, not videotapes, but super hit movies. Yes. Yes, and uh, Dan told me that um, Bruce just come watch the video and just pick it up like this. Now, do you have teachers that you're under now in France? No, not really. I have to say that, not really. I went to France have, uh, for a week. I spent an intensive training. I had... Uh, Couple of people we who taught the classes, and uh, it was uh, a little bit different from what I saw in a book because what I learned from my book, this book that I had was published in 1970, and at this time they were still teaching what they call the old-fashioned mm -hmm. art with the hands in extension and uh, with the very graceful forms, makes the art looks great. And uh, I was very into that, what they call the, they said about me, when I sent them some pictures of me, they say, that's very good, that's very good, but few people do these kind of things anymore. It's too academic. Academic. Academic, too old fashioned. And um, I said, well, I don't know what they say that because Bruce used a lot of kicks like that with hands in extensions and, uh, and I didn't really know what they mean. And uh, when I went back to France, I realized that they have their hands, their hands clo close together, like more like a boxer. Every time, even when they kick, make the arm look a little bit more like pique, even if the kicks are strictly savate. Can you tell us the difference between the traditional savate form of fighting and the way it's done today? Well, the new, the new form is more, the hands is more like pique or English boxing. Our hands are very close together, even when they kick. Mm -hmm. The kick are not like piquet, they still like savat. They chamber the kicks every time using the shoe. They have to respect the range, always using the shoe, so complete extension. You know, they cannot kick with the shin. Mm -hmm. It's not allowed, so they use the point of the shoe, the heel, or the edge, or whatever. This is still the same for new form or old form. The difference or it's when they kick. 
the other hands covering the chest. And with the complex extension of the legs and the hands together makes uh, the body looks great. It looks like, um, like ballet and, the, and snapping fast and come back to the position when the, the kicks look very specifically. Savad looks great. Yeah, but does the newer style, boxing style, does it have it really an advantage over the traditional? What, what is the purpose of the traditional full extension of the arm and all that? Um, okay, I will answer first to your second question. Extend the arm, I noticed that when you use your old fashioned form, you can kick a little bit farther. Because you have 50 50, you have good balance, so you can really extend much more mm -hmm. the leg when so, you kick. So you're stretching out more? Much more. Like about almost along the foot. Yeah. So when you use the point of the shoe to the face or to the stomach, it can help mm -hmm. a lot. And when you put your hands together, they say you're more cover, you see, you better protection. But what's happened to me at the first time when I saw the art and a book, it's the extension and the legs and hands in extension makes the art look more like gymnastic. Something looks like gymnastic, remind me of my background, which I, I could use, and also um, the gracefulness at the same time. So I have efficiency and gracefulness at the same time. And when I saw Bruce in his movie, using these kicks and extension of the legs and arms at the same time when he was spinning or run kick or stuff like that. I said, well, it doesn't be necessary, it's not necessary to have both hands in protection. <clears throat> and uh, so I, de I decided to learn the old form. And actually I didn't have really much choice because the only book I had, <laughs> it was the old fashioned form. Right. <clears throat> and uh, so when I went to France, uh, they look at me and they say, this, many people ask me, uh, who was your teacher? And I say, well, my teacher is Bernard Plaze. He's a guy who wrote this book. And they said, <laughs> they start to laugh, and they say, well, you're a case. We never see anyone learning salad by himself and have such a good forms. You know, I mean, it's, I was a case. <laughs> <laughs> Salam, do you teach both forms of savat? Yes, I do. I definitely do. Because um, when I was... When I was starting to spread the art on doing seminar and, uh, or doing when I was talking in my class, Dan always told me, um, you know, Salem, I don't know why, but I prefer the old form. And I say, well, we are both of us to like the old form. And I'm sure it's going to appeal more to the American people, the old form, than a new form. Because at first, it's going to, look, appear, to ap appear to them like, like Piqué. And, um, they will say, they will probably think, well, what's the purpose to learn the Thabat if we, when, if we have PK, even if they didn't know yet that uh, it's very different. So psychologically, it was better to use the old fashioned form. Like right away, they see, oh, this is very different, and it is. Mm -hmm. It is. So we have to use what's, uh, what's specific to the art to spray, to spray it. Salem, so, tell us about the fascinating history of Savat? Well, it's very interesting and very long. <laughs> um, fighting with the hands and fists is something very common in France in uh, around the 17th to 18th centuries. And the streets of Paris were, were not very secure. And uh, they used to, to fight all the time using uh, everything they could use as weapons. Knees, elbow, kicking, punching, headbutt, pulling hair. <laughs> everything goes. <laughs> And, Tough street uh, fighters back uh, then. Definitely, and uh, we have actually we have some documents and drawings of uh, when we can see some of the uh, street fighting. And uh, Paris used to develop the heart of La Savate, was uh, just kicking and uh, punching with the open hands. Okay, and then south of France, Marseille developed more sport called called Le Chausson, it's also another name for shoe, but it's kind of shoes they wear when they go on a boat. And uh, they used to also have a sparring between uh, English sailor against the French prisoner. <laughs> 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 and uh, they report that the French people used to fight with uh, one hand on the floor and use a kick, and the boxer, English boxer used only the hands, kicks being strictly forbidden. And um, one day, one of uh, our creator, not creator, but the guy who put, one of the guys who put together the art was uh, Lecour, 
in uh, he combined um, punching, English boxing, with the art of kicking la savate and chausson together, and creates what they call box française. And um, later on, Charlemagne came, and he was really the guy who did the art, what is today, something very um, s s um, scientifically put together, codified very well, kicking, punching, uh, everything uh, he put together. He actually, he wrote two books, uh, which uh, I possess one of them that he wrote in 1899. And um, it's uh, very, very, very technical. And this guy was a genius. And he wrote in his book that uh, a great fighter will not, will not get stuck with only one heart, but he's going to look around and uh, uh, pick up a little bit the best of everything and make like the ultimate martial art. And uh, for me, it was incredible to find this in his book because it's stuck like a real JKD guy. <laughs> and uh, I told Dan, I say, you see, some people were already in the right way at the time. And um, this, uh, was, this is one of the things that amazed me the most about this guy. So he is the founder of Savat, as it's known today? Yes, he's the real founder of what we call La Boxe Francaise Savat, the heart, the total heart. Okay. What year exactly did Savat begin? <laughs> Savat itself began like nobody really knows when. Oh, I see. Nobody really knows when. But the art of Savat, it's around 1870 when Charlemagne really codified the art and make it a real, a true sport. A sport and a system of self-defense. Because before, Savat or Box Francaise appealed more like for the street fighting street fighters and nobody really not n n no like i say uh, noble people will want to le learn the art right. i mean how to keep growing pulling yeah. hair and headbutt and stuff like that so Shalomon say well if i want to promote this heart he has to look good and he took all the kicks and make them look good and efficient at the same time Salem, what does the word savat translate to mean? Savat is a slang language from Paris, meaning shoe, boots. When you say to someone, put your savats on, I mean, put your old shoes <laughs> on and let's go. You know, it's purely uh, the slang language. It could be a boot, a shoe, um, any kind of things. Salem, when did savat become a national sport in France? Under the influence of Joseph Charlemont which is the father of Charles Charlemont. And um, um, in 1887, when uh, Joseph opened his first school, official school in Paris, he attracted a lot of people, and among them members of the nobility, like uh, Alexandre Dumas, which, which is the guy who wrote The Three Musketeers. Oh. And um, so Savat was uh, at his peak, if I can say, you know, around 1900, 1902. And also, uh, Savat was um, Olympic uh, sport of demonstration for the Olympic Games in 1924. Uh, so the school functioned until the, the death of his son, Charles Charlemagne, in 1944. And um, not everybody knows that, but um, George Carpentier, who was a French champion, of um, um, Savat, was French champion of Savat, was also world champion of English boxing, but he was first a Savat guy. Mm -hmm. And um, so, unfortunately, during the First and Second World War, all the great masters died, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, after the war, if uh, one guy, the Count Baruzzi, a member of the nobility, was a student of Charles Charlemont, um, was not there, the house would probably be completely dead today. So, thanks to him, he put together all the people left, if I can say this way, um, with him, and uh, they were like a handful, and um, they really wanted to keep doing it. And uh, it took a long time, but with the years, they brought more and more people together, the Croats Association, Federation. And uh, in 1969, I think, um, he used to have like 300 or 350 practitioners of Savat. 
Now we have, uh, in 1986, we have like 30,000 people wow. putting in the hall. And the Savat matches, how many spectators usually come? To tell you the truth, uh, Savat is the only uh, martial arts in Paris who fill up uh, a pla the place. Thousands so of people. Yes, because it's so exciting to see. Yeah. It's like Thai boxing, except that uh, uh, it looks more uh, sophisticated because of the kick, spinning, kicking, uh, uh, side kick, uh, reverse kick. Tell us about the rules during a Savat competition. Uh, the rules make the art very exciting during competition. Um, because, uh, first of all, it's so crowded and everybody is screaming and uh, it's very, very exciting. They can use a shoe, so they wear shoes. They have a boxing glove, mouthpiece and cup. No shin guards, nothing. Mm -hmm. All kicks are lowered and uh, in the three lines, so they kick in the legs. And uh, they make a lot of noise with the shoe. <laughs> <laughs> and um, um, they cannot kick the groin, of course, so he's, he has a regulation, of course, definitely. And um, but it's they, they can kick the legs. Absolutely, absolutely. Wow. In any in any position, front leg, rear leg, on the front, on the side, the knee, uh, the front chassis, front side kick, frontal side kick on the knee. It's allowed since last year. How many rounds during a fight? Uh, four rounds. How many minutes? Uh, it's uh, one minute and a half each. And a minute rest in between. And a minute rest in between. And how are the fighters judged? Um, they judge on uh, how many, uh, of course, there is a uh, KO, you know, the knockout, you know. Knockout? Is there is a knockout, there is the points, you know. Okay, what do they judge points on? Do they have to throw so many kicks per round? No, they don't have to. Um, if the guy is going to sparring and uh, trying to fight and he doesn't, uh, he doesn't kick, they will say, they will stop the fight and say, well, you have to kick or mm -hmm. you lose. Yeah. You know, he has to kick, he cannot just punch him. But um, uh, if, he just, if he just kick, I think he can uh, throw a few punches. But he cannot just do punches and not kicking. How do most knockouts occur in Savat competition? Mostly by feet, also mm -hmm. by hands, but I say mostly by feet. And um, it's most of the time with the point of the shoe or the, the powerful chassis, say, kick with the heel and with the shoe protecting your feet so you can kick very hard. So the point of the shoe, the stomach, even if you have a abs like steel, you have to experiment it. It's very, very so strong. So Savat uh, kicks with the point. Yeah, use the point like the, a, the, point, the toe. Like, like, like a knife, Like huh? a knife, exactly. We stab with the point of the shoe. So Can every time we touch, every time it hurts, so we try to get out of the way every time. So we go knock out with the point of the shoe to the temple. To you the drop. temple? Wow. Boom. If your hands is a bit drop, boom, you drop. And the street is more realistic because in the street you have the shoe. So you use your shoe as a weapon. Mm -hmm. While using the shin, um, every time when you can also use your, your shoe and a longer syringe. The shin is efficient and you close the syringe. And as a longer syringe, you want to use your shoe. Tell us about Savat kicking techniques. Why are they different than, let's say, karate or thigh boxing kicks? What's so unique about them? Um, the, um, the shoe is a different range. If you have your shoe, like I just said before, you want to kick, you can kick from the longest range, you see, and avoid to be in a close quarter range when you can get exposed to the elbow, headbutt, or whatever. You can, you can snap your kick like a whip. That's, quite, that's why it's called a fouetté. The round kick is called fouetté because it's really like a whip. Bam! We slap it, we snap, bang, and come back very quickly to the position, initial position, to kick, to kick two or three times um, in different angles, and uh, like this, bang, bang, bang. You see what I mean? And um, uh, for example, uh, a karate is a little bit more stiff, in my opinion. Stiff? Yeah. Uh -huh. Than than uh, Savat. It's not really a critic, like because karate is always, it's, it's an efficient art, but it's. it's uh, uh, compared to the Savat, it's more stiff, I have to say. Um, Savat is fluid. He's, it's really like, uh, like a fluid. <laughs> we have to see it to really... It's very graceful ballet type movements yes, from and, what I see. Yes, and non-stop moving. Non-stop moving. I there is it, no uh, yeah. stiff position. Yeah, it's very deceptive. Uh, you might not see or feel the power by watching it like you would karate. Mm -hmm. You know, you hear that snapping. 
but savat flows it whips it yes. uh, it's deceptive it's that's very why deceptive. That, and this is a uh, i have to say that uh, many people and even myself at the really beginning when i heard about savat some people thought that savat were like this is style because it was very graceful you know and also a, a woman practiced the art a lot mm -hmm. of women used to practice the art and I say, well, I don't think it should be something powerful. Until one day I experimented with Savat guy, he was on the front of me, and he was just being the hell out of me, and I couldn't do anything. He was very far away from me, mm -hmm. and he was flying, giving me high round kick to the face, and at the last second, showing my legs with a shoe. Wow. And uh, I said, gee, what the hell is this? <laughs> and I say, this is Savat. Wow. Uh, it was my first encounter. So that impressed you was having the face of Savat man. That's what woke you up to it, huh? Yeah. So was this your first encounter with a Savat fighter? Yes, when I was in Paris for the, <laughs> for the first time training with them. And uh, I realized how deceptive was the art. I was, because you use a lot of fake also, you know. Faking. They, they, they mm -hmm. fake high and they kick low. They reverse kick high and they finish in your knees. and. Uh, it's very de de deceiving, you know. You, you cannot, you cannot until the last moment. You, you cannot see where he's going to strike. So, where does the savat power and damage come from? The snapping motion of the kick come from the slapping, a snapping motion of the kick, and also using the shoe. The shoe, yes, the shoe. that adds a lot more impact, yes, doesn't it? Absolutely, because um, when you are barefoot, you cannot use your toe as efficiently by striking the stomach that if you have your shoe covering your toe, mm -hmm. you see what I mean? And you can risk to enjoy your toes with a barefoot, for example. You cannot afford the same techniques, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, so with the shoe putting in the foot, they really can eat as much as they want without... So that makes it a good self-defense therapy. Absolutely, because um, on the street, you have a shoe, you, ha you will have rarely an opportunity to have a street fighting and you are barefoot. Salem, what is the difference between savat and Thai boxing? This is a good question because everywhere I go going seminar, I was always the same one. Um, the Thai boxing use uh, mostly the front push kick and the roundhouse kick, very very powerful. Because mm -hmm. I also also train Thai boxing in the Chai series, with, and which is a, also a great instructor. And um, I really like this, the heart of Thai boxing. I think it's a great, great compliment for, for Savat. Actually, some Savat people also train Thai boxing on the side, mm -hmm. or some Thai boxer train Savat in mm -hmm. France. So they realize that the both, both of the hearts uh, go very well together. Anyway, um, the Savat kicks are much more sophisticated, I have to say, because it's the, the truth. Um, we have all the kicks possible and imaginable in all lines, low, medium, high, spinning, uh, jumping, mm -hmm. front leg, rear leg. Uh, but um, we don't go all the way through when we kick, only on street f defense. Because we use the shoe, we don't have to kick as hard as Thai boxing. As they are barefoot, they have to use the shin, so they have to be in a closest range. In Savat, we use the shoe, we can kick from far mm -hmm. and um, avoid to being touched when we kick the legs that being too close and get exposed to elbows or headbutts, you know. So this is mainly the big difference. The kicks are more sophisticated in, in Savat. The kicks are very powerful in Thai boxing, you see. I see. Are there competitions where Savat and Thai boxers fight each other? No. No, because uh, the French Federation don't allow it, any uh, Savat uh, people uh, fighting with other styles. I see. Since, um, they don't want they don't want to do that, but I know that um, a French guy and his buddy went to Japan and they wanted to, to see first for a tour, uh, visit Japan, and they went to see um, one of those uh, Japanese uh, kickboxing tournaments. Mm -hmm. It's like, I think it's like Thai boxing. Yes, I saw, exactly. uh, I saw the pictures and uh, pretty impressive, I have to say. And um, his friend, this guy, um, this guy's friend looked at it and said, uh, this looks very tough. And he said, uh, I, would, I won't like to be there. And his friend said, well, me, I'm going to go. And he said, it's too dangerous. <laughs> and he said, it's not the same things. We, you, we do Savat and they do, they do different things. 
Anyway, uh, he put his shorts on, he has his shavat shoes on, he put boxing gloves, and uh, I think just registered at the last minute, he went on a ring. And uh, everything was uh, recorded on TV, so he did five fights, he won all of them, and uh, three by knockout. Wow. And how, with the point of the shoe to the stomach, a coup de pied bar that, uh, to the shin, mm -hmm. followed by jab cross. Very classic. Oh. Exactly the same techniques that uh, uh, Charles Charlemont, the son of Joseph Charlemont, used uh, against um, uh, the English boxer when they fight, because the French and English boxer used to always compete together. <laughs> oh, the English boxing yeah. is better, French right. skill boxing is better. So they used to organize sometimes little tournament, mm -hmm. but it was always little tournament, uh, mm -hmm. this way, over there, etc. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day they decide to do once for all to decide which heart is the best. So they brought this uh, English champion um, in Paris and they organized a big, big tournament which uh, all the newspapers used to talk about it at the time, mm -hmm. even in Russia, for tell you how big was the event. And um, uh, it was pretty a quarrel. The Charlemont received some punchings for the boxer, but uh, finally Charlemont won by giving a strong roundhouse kick with the point of the shoe to the stomach of the boxer and a jab cross for finish. And, uh, that was it. That was it. Wow. And um, <laughs> this at the time, this was um, in uh, 19, 1902, I think, mm -hmm. or 1900 anyway. It was, uh, Savat was really at the peak. Of yes. Please tell us about a Savat training session. Well, so, there are different ways of teaching it. In France, uh, we have so many instructors that we they all have their own way to teach, mm -hmm. to teach the heart. Um, myself, I'm greatly influenced by Danino Santo because I trained with him first and um, I really enjoy the way he teach and I did, I copy myself, mostly the way he did. So anyway, we always start by jumping ropes and then um, like about, we spend like 15 to 20 minutes of warming up with a specific stretching exercise from uh, ballet or gymnastic and from Savat, um, because anyways, the stre stretching from Savat yeah. come from ballet mm -hmm. and uh, gymnastic, and uh, some uh, exercise to loosen the, hip, the hips, you know. And loosening not, up the hips. Yeah, loosening uh -huh. up the hip, because uh, people think that they have to do the split, front split, left split, right split, to be a good kicker. And also their mistakes, common mistakes of most of the people is to think that to be a good Savat practitioner, you have to kick in the hair to kick the face every time. And uh, I want to say and telling them that that's not true because um, Savat uh, kick low, may jump high, and some people are so bad in flexibility yeah. and they keep practicing the heart and they always do low line. So as you can see, um, even people who are not very flexible can practice the heart. They can only kick low line if they want to because uh, first of all in the street it's more efficient, it's more direct, so they don't have to kick the head and to be very, very flexible and even medium and just, just go to the low line. So everybody can practice the art of Savat, regarding flexibility level or the age, because uh, we have a student from five years old to 91 years old. The oldest one is the Count Baruzzi, the one with thanks to him the heart is still alive. And uh, as from what I hear, he's still practicing. <laughs> Tell me, do you have to study Savat to be a fighter in competition, or can you just do it for health and self-defense? Oh, absolutely. You can practice the heart for just, just for the fun, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of fun because mm -hmm. you can play with the heart of Savat. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to touch. Touch is an obligation. So we have, you want to touch, you don't want to be touched. So we have some of the games like that. That's the, that's the way we start. Oh, you must touch with the kicks and punches? Absolutely. There is no, no contact. You uh -huh. always have to touch. Mm -hmm. It's a necessity number one. It's a rule number one. You have to touch. Then you have, um, um, you can practice the heart just for, for the sport, fitness mm -hmm. and sport, you know. Self-defense. Many women practice the heart because uh, they, they, they can use their, their shoes. They don't have to do a things too fancy and mm -hmm. uh, the heart looks good so if they are dancers they like the heart mm -hmm. it looks great and uh, also for competition if you want to be a fighter I see and uh, they know how many fighters we have <laughs> <laughs>
And what about the rankings in Savat? Could you explain certification? Mm -hmm. We have um, five first degree level in Savat. First, before we reach the silver glove, we have blue glove because we work by color glove. Mm -hmm. It's not the glove that you wear, change color. It's just a patch with a glove, and the color of the patch is different. So the insignia for Savat <coughs> is gloves? Yes. Yes, and you have so the first level, which is the first degree technical. It's blue level, blue color. Then you have uh, green. Then you have red, followed by white, then yellow. So it's similar to karate. A kind of, but it's not by. It's mostly by uh, how long you practice the art. I see. And then you have an exam, and um, combination exercise, uh, sparring. Um, are required, you know, mm -hmm. and um, if you pass the exam, you pass the, co the color gloves, your, your ranking goes up, you know, and um, you have, uh, so you have a combination of fighting, you know, you have uh, defense, technique, opportunities, uh, they judge you on all of that, include, uh, you have to do uh, sparrings, you know, mm -hmm. light sparrings, you know, but uh, to see how you move, technical, how you precision, uh, your control, and uh, if you can do the combination required for your level. And if you pass the exam, uh, you get the rank. Now, the silver glove rank is like a, let's say, black belt level, and you're called a professor at that level? No, because uh, being a professor and being a silver glove is two different things. Oh, what's you know, that? A silver glove cannot be necessarily a professor, you know? And a professor oh. uh, has to be a silver glove. Do you understand the difference? Yes. You cannot be a, prof you cannot be a professor if you're not silver glove. But being silver glove doesn't mean you're going to be a professor, because some people are uh, good technical or good fighters, but they don't know how to teach the art. Ah, so and professor is above silver glove, more or less, because you're a proven teacher? Yes, if I can say this way, yes. Because uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot to have to do to be a professor. You know, when you go to France, they don't give the, the ranking like that. To tell you the truth, uh, it was very tough. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, they don't only judge you on what you know about um, the human body, because you have to know everything, the bones, the muscles, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and uh, the condition, uh, how, um, if you have a problem, an injury, et cetera, et cetera. They ask you a bunch of questions, you know, mm -hmm. and because it's required by the French government. Then, um, and also by the Federation. And also, uh, <clears throat> then you judge, you judge you on your techniques, and you have to be good. Now, you're a registered professor from France. Yes. So you're allowed to uh, rank people and award certificates, aren't you? Yes, absolutely. So if someone out there wanted to achieve ranking in Savat, mm -hmm. they could probably study from your videos and then uh, test under you, test the techniques. Yes. Let's yes. see. So that's, that's, that's my purpose of uh, me and Dan. When we go giving seminar, we try to, uh, Dan is praying his heart, and I'm trying to pray to spread the Savat. And uh, I'm coming regularly to, to those places and, and build up people. So you're on a mission. <laughs> a kind of, actually. To educate the people on Savat, this yes. exotic kicking art. Mm -hmm. What are your uh, future goals and plans for Savat? How would you like to see it in the years to come? Well, I would like the heart to be implanted um, in the United States. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, I'm, I'm, I feel a little bit like Dan when he was starting to spread the art of Cali. He was just by himself. So he gave me a lot of comfort in telling me, oh, don't worry, you will do it. Because uh, when I remember when I did the trying to spread the art, I was by myself and nobody yeah. believed in it. Uh -huh. And uh, it took me a long time. And I feel like him now because uh, I'm by myself. And um, uh, I know what I'm, I want to bring is good stuff. How has the response been so far to Savat in America? Well, great, I have to say, because uh, I'm very lucky, again, to travel with Dan. And um, um, people trust his judgment, you know. Dan helped me to, to promote the art. And uh, people think that if Dan wants people to learn about it, it's because it's good stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks to him, uh, uh, I have a great help, and every t everywhere I, I went and so far, they really enjoy it. <laughs> what type of people are attracted to your Savat seminars? 
Well, when I give, when I give seminars, um, everybody actually, they, they enjoy uh, to see the gracefulness, something different in a kick, in a kick and uh, combinations. They love to see the combination of savat. And uh, they like the flow, you know, to kick low, high, medium. Uh. Well, you know, when you take your uh, students through uh, savat kicking techniques, what kind of response do you get from the martial artists who are used to, uh, let's say, set patterns of kicking? Oh, they, they can't believe, they cannot believe the eyes that the French people develop such a um, highly effective heart of kicking. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, say, they, they think it's too bad that they didn't hear about it before, or they, oh. they could have an opportunity to see it. And uh, they always want to learn more. Unfortunately, I cannot be anywhere. That's why I try to build an instructor to spread the art. Salem, you just completed a dynamic series of videos on Savat, and it has thousands of techniques. What do you hope to teach through your tapes? Well, I show from A to Z all of the art of Savat, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, they are going to uh, be able to greatly, greatly improve their kicking, their punching, their combinations, and they're going to be uh, definitely amazed to see um, what they can do with uh, with the savat, mm -hmm. with how they can develop their uh, strength, how they are going to be able to to give different kicks in different angles, how to move, how to to be able to to move softly um, with the flow and uh, kicks in different angles and punching in different angles and be very decept uh, deceiving in the in yeah. their punching, kicking, and uh, throwing and sparring and greatly improve also for people who like to spar and doing kickboxing. Uh, tournament uh, yeah. are going to learn a lot. Very, uh, very efficient techniques. So whether they are full contact fighters or point fighters, self-defense techniques, everyone can benefit. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Everybody, everybody is going to learn a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they are. Salem, thank you for this exclusive video interview, which has given us tremendous insight into the French art of savate. Thank you. Thank you.